All right, we've got this HVAC wall unit, uh, forced air gas unit installed roughly into the opening. We did a nice clean job of mapping out and cutting out that piece of drywall. You'll notice this is sort of a conventionally built wall. Let me see if I can get that to the exposure to automatically adjust. Um, but there's just sheeting, which is nowadays is plywood, but it used to be boards, tongue and groove, and your stud, and a layer of drywall and insulation um, I've thrown in there. There's actually cellulose poured in because this building was balloon style, um, which is dangerous for a lot of reasons. Uh, fire can travel easily up through a wall cavity. Normally you build uh, a floor to the outside of the building, then a wall on it. Then you do another floor to the outside of the building, then a wall on it. And this interrupts the wall cavity at every floor completely and provides fire protection because if the fire starts in or burns into the wall, it can't easily continue up, licking up through the wall bay the way um, the way that that is. In a balloon construction, if it gets into the wall, it can go right on up past and start burning out through at the second floor, or third floor, however far, because the wall opening is, rather than um, the floor box sitting on top of walls, the walls go up first, the outside, and then the joists are hung on those vertical studs, and the subfloor only goes over to the face of the stud, rather than the way it's done now, is you go up to the first floor, you build a floor box on top of that, and you put your subfloor on out to the outside of the building, which caps that whole surface off. Then you start again with a floor plate for your wall, and you go up once more, etc., etc. So this is balloon style, so these floor joists go over into a wall bay that's just got studs coming up from the first floor and they're hung on the side of it. Subfloor goes to the face of them and the wall cavity goes right on by. Um, so if you were to look down in there, you could see this had insulation in there because we went up to the third floor and poured loose cellulose ins insulation down into the wall cavity all along. On this one, obviously, it came down, this is built between two studs out to the sheeting to create this little built-in the wall cavity it filled up from here and here there was nothing so some of the insulation that i took out of that i've thrown in here and as i patch this i'll fill it up completely so we've got an r value in here now which is pretty significant we probably have you know r15 or greater which is kind of nice to have in the northeast where we are um that being said so i saved that and i snow shoveled it into the clean new garbage uh, bag and I'll be reusing it around here. Here's the piece of drywall that came out. Did a little investigating with the hammer first and made the nice clean cut all the way around for this thing. And I was really happy. It just went right in there after I did a big um, hole saw hole out through for the exhaust penetration. I did not use the sawzall. It's common in this application to use. You got to set up a blade depth or um, be careful about what you're doing so that you're not smashing into the sheeting as you're doing the cut. Boom, 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 like that. And you'll also notice that this is um, an interesting, perhaps painted wallpaper or something, and there was tape right here because the stud's here. And I didn't want to start that tearing with an oscillation movement and create like a ragged edge here that's hard to put a super clean caulk line on or what have you, so I used a different tool. I love this thing, I've talked about it before. Um, I do roll Milwaukee, but that's uh, primarily because I'm in a battery system, which whomever you are whatever battery system you've started with is a really it's a smart idea to stick to the battery system that you're on and get everything that you need that you want to be dc powered on that battery system it makes life a breeze because if there's if there's a if there's a topped up battery laying around anywhere on any tool you can quick grab that throw your current flat battery on the charger and get right back to work and it's all the same stuff and you only need one charger da -da -da -da. so other than that I like Milwaukee for a variety of other reasons. They have a wider variety of tools and stuff. But this one in particular, um, you can put a variety of three inch blades on there. This isn't the most desirable one for the application, but it was the one that I had. And it's got a clockable guard, it just moves around like that. So it changes how you can approach the work. And then if you want to do dust collection, which I did over there, which made it even tidier, you just put the little included shoe on. He just fits over like, Oh, it's tough to do. Let me see if, how easy it can be with one hand even. So long as you get it, ooh, just worth doing on camera. Oh, there it is. And then you just feel, hear a little snap. There it is. Then you can reset the depth, which you need to let out to let the blade go through. But now that's attached to the guard, so the whole thing is clockable based on your application easily. It's just sort of got detents in it, so um, little spring detents. So you can set that up based on your application, and you can switch both 
uh, blade spinning directions. You can do ye old clockwise or anti-clockwise, counterclockwise. And I put a big fat uh, six amp hour battery on that pig. And then the dust collection obviously hooks up to the fine dust knockout, to the shop vac. And I just straight up walked in here. I was really careful about my pencil lines, made sure that they were um, accurate as well as giving me a little breathing room and just went and the piece came out cleanly. There wasn't any dust in here. In fact, the insulation made more of a mess. Um, I just love it. And that you can't beat that quality. I mean, that's the raw cut. There's a little bit of dust still there. Let me set this down. You know, that's dust. But that's just exactly what it looked like when I was through. Um, so just super pleased with this thing. I can't tell you how many times I just grab it and go on a variety of different things. In fact, I had to cut my broken exhaust off my truck and it took me 10 minutes on my back with just that thing and the hand lamp on so that was handy um here's the piece that came out too all one piece so we love that thing and but you can makita and dewalt bosch um you know make excellent tools that are that come in a wide variety of battery tools obviously hilti and others um as well not as big of a variety i love the milwaukee variety and um, when everything's red, I've even got most of my other stuff. If it's not Milwaukee, it's just that it's red. And that makes it easy to identify when I travel with it. If it's red, it's mine. Um, almost always. So then we got the table legs extended. This is a rough uh, check here, or what do you want to call that, a mock-up. So I attached them to the table briefly. Um, there are the screw holes that need to be filled with some spackle. We'll use a high-density like cabinetry spackle, um, like a Sherwin-Williams good quality spackle, but I wanted to see where the shelf really needs to live, get a measurement and make an actual pencil mark right on the on the material, and I wanted to see how I feel about this height and whether or not I want it to be a little lower or whatever, so we'll gain our information here, and then we'll take that apart again and continue to process it. Um, and where are we? I guess we're going to work in the bathroom too. Got the floor subfloor patched, uh, I got to add some pieces of trim. This is kind of interesting. This room is, or was, uh, matched lumber and then drywalled. So I believe when it was just matched lumber was when the door was trimmed all around. And then they added drywall, rather than being behind the trim, they just added it into this space here, cut to fit over there or what have you. So that means that this trim only sticks out like a quarter of an inch maybe, despite the fact that this is a three quarter or even maybe closer to an inch, seven eighths board. Um, which meant that because baseboard dies into the vertical trim in the room and they drywalled down to the floor, the baseboard that they added is just a, a quarter inch thin little strip to like indicate baseboard. Here it is, I popped it off here. I was thinking that it went back to the wood just like the door trim and then the drywall was fit inside of everything, but it wasn't. And I don't even know that that's drywall, that's like cement board. Um, this whole thing is weird to me. Um, I can't just rip it all off and add three quarter all the way around the room to get a really nice look because I'm going to come back and crash into the trim on the door and I'd be out however much which would be unacceptable so then I could add to the door and then okay, I thought that maybe I'll add to the face of the door and get it out to the point where I could use real trim and then I came around and found that they, did, they had trimmed the tub insert here uh, and it dies into there so you just keep uh, compounding and compounding the complexity here. So instead we're just going to put quarter inch back in this location, paint it to look like trim in here. Um, it'll be a bit janky, but it is a rental unit and to be honest this is going to be quite nice. In fact the guys at Sherman Williams kind of boggled their mind that I was going to use emerald uh, like fifty dollars with a discount gallon gallons of paint to paint in here, but I don't think people understand the quality of the paint is one thing when it's on the wall it's who you know who knows whether it's good pain or not once it's there and how long it's going to last it's when you're painting with it that's when you notice a good paint product if you can truly do two coats and be done almost all the time um a lot of paints tout one coat but that's horse shit if you can do two coats and know that it'll almost always be finished and the, it's a nice thick body to the paint and it just is excellent on the brush and everything about it's a pleasure it's well worth it to me since i'm doing the painting to invest in a in a really high quality paint so that's where you get the idea of good quality paint um all right and that's what we'll be using all over in here a variety of different colors but we'll get back to you when there's more to report